The Corolla XRS is a great used car, whether you're picking one up as your first car, another project car, or just a daily driver. However, like most cars, it does have some flaws that you'll want to consider before you pick one up. Before we get any further, this video is entirely about the 2005 and 2006 Corolla XRS. If you're looking for a 2009 or 2010 Corolla Matrix XRS, then a lot of the info that you're going to find in this video is probably irrelevant. If you're looking at a 2003 to 2006 Matrix XRS, although you'll find a lot of the stuff in this video helpful, there may be a few Matrix specific flaws that I don't know about. I'm going to be covering four different things in this video. One, the differences between the XRS and the standard run-of-the-mill Corollas. Two, the main issues you want to look in the XRS specifically. Three, main issues that plague all of these Corollas, which it's not too many of them. And four, things to keep in mind when you actually go to check out the car. So what separates the Corolla XRS from the rest of the trims? Well, it's mainly the front strut bar, the rear Yamaha cross brace, which is hidden behind the plastic wall in the trunk, four-wheel disc brakes as opposed to two discs in the front and two drums in the back, 16-inch wheels, six-speed manual transmission, and of course the 2ZZ GE engine. There's some other small things as well, such as a 150 mile an hour speedometer, it's half an inch lower, and it's got some silver interior trim pieces, but those are small enough to where you can just find them on your own. The biggest issues that surround the XRS mainly revolve around the engine and transmission, given that these are the biggest changes compared to the lower trim models. For starters, the 2ZZ GE has lift bolts. Basically what lift bolts do is engage lift at the appropriate time. If you don't know what lift is, to put it simply, it's just a more aggressive cam profile that locks at a certain RPM. Pretty similar to Honda's VTEC. And the issue with these lift bolts is that they break. Now the Corolla XRS was made in 2005 and 2006, which uses updated lift bolts, which are significantly less likely to break than earlier model years, particularly in the earlier, earlier 2000s. Now when these bolts break, it completely stops lift from actually engaging, and to dig out the broken piece from inside is a major pain. Now this isn't a major issue with the Corolla XRS because like I said, it uses updated lift bolts, but it is something that you definitely want to keep in mind. I'd personally recommend replacing them as a precaution anyway. I replaced mine within three days of ownership, but it's up to you. A more important issue than the lift bolts though is the oil pan. Oil is the blood of your engine and without it, your engine's not going to live a very long life. Well, actually it's not really gonna live any life. The problem with the factory oil pan is that it is completely unbaffled. It's about as useful as bolting up a Home Depot bucket to the bottom of your engine. So why is this an issue? Well, with an unbaffled oil pan, when you're going around corners, you can slosh oil to the side of the oil pan so much so that the oil pickup no longer picks up oil and instead sucks in air. Once it sucks in air, goodbye to ZZ. This is mainly a concern if you plan on using your XRS for the track, or for some spirited mountain driving, or something along those lines, but regardless of what you use the car for, you should definitely be keeping this in mind. Luckily, solving this issue is as simple as replacing the oil pan. Funny enough, the 1ZZ's oil pan, you know, the 1ZZ from the lower trim Corollas, does have a baffle in it, and it will bolt up to the 2ZZ with some minor trimming. I know, I'm thinking the same thing. Putting a baffled oil pan on the lower trim Corollas, but not on the higher performance Corolla is, uh, well, baffling. The other option is installing Marasso's all aluminium oil pan, which has the benefits of trapping oil around the oil pickup to make sure that it never picks up air, as well as increases oil capacity so you don't run too low. You should still regularly check your oil level though. Unfortunately, this isn't where oiling issues end with the 2ZZ. The oil pump gear has a slight tendency to... explode. Okay, maybe it's not that dramatic. However, over revving this engine is pretty much a guarantee to make that oil pump gear pretty upset with you. 
And there's also two fixes for this as well. First, just don't over rev it. The factory red line is at 8200 and if you never go above it, it should keep you and your wallet safe. Now I think in the past there have been some cases of this gear shattering at factory red line, but I'm pretty sure those were earlier year 2ZZs and don't affect the 2005-2006 Coral XRS. However, if you want to go past the 8200 RPM red line, or you just want some safety and peace of mind, you can opt to upgrade to a billet oil pump gear. Monkey Wrench Racing and Redliner 9000 both offer some sort of upgrade for this. I'm sure there's other companies that make it as well, but I'm uncultured and don't know them. Another big ticket issue with the XRS is the transmission. It's not that strong. Don't get me wrong, it's not made of glass. I'd compare it more to, uh, to acrylic. Now, if you take care of your transmission, change the fluid every 60 or so thousand miles, and you're not super rough with it, you should be fine. But if you abuse it like a stepfather does to his child, you'll eventually be looking at a rebuild. Third gear especially is notorious for issues from abuse that not even therapy will solve. And although there are rebuild kits out there to boost the strength of the C60 transmission, many of us would probably like to avoid having a rebuild at all. Another quick way to destroy this transmission is through wheel hop. Wheel hop is when you launch your car and one or sometimes even both wheels jump around violently. The transmission hates this and it will destroy itself in revenge. Now you can upgrade suspension, bushings, etc. to reduce this, but the best way to get rid of wheel hop and save your transmission is with a limited slip differential. Be prepared to shell out a hefty sum of money though. Second to last is the timing chain cover gasket. It will leak. There is a pretty good chance that the XRS that you're gonna look at will have a leaking timing chain cover gasket. If it doesn't leak though, enjoy it. I guarantee you at some point during your ownership, it will leak. Don't let this scare you too much though. The worst thing that can happen is you just have to top off the oil every week. And it's not like it's gonna be gushing oil out either. It's you know, drip, 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 whatever. Changing the gasket yourself though is quite the task and it's not for the lightest of hearts. However, getting a professional mechanic to change it is not for the lightest of wallets. I have heard of mechanics taking the entire engine out to replace this gasket, which isn't necessary, but that's just how they do it, which will run you several thousand dollars for a gasket, which will leak again. Yeah, it's not worth it. If you're confident in your own repair abilities though, feel free to give it a shot. Finally, the air injection system can be a little bit annoying. If you don't know what air injection does, basically on a cold start, it will take some air out of your intake and route it into the exhaust. What it does is it leans out the mixture going to your cat converter so it burns a little bit cleaner and makes the emissions a little bit better. Sometimes though, the air injection just doesn't really want to behave and it'll throw a code for whatever it feels like that day. This is a pretty minor inconvenience though, since the air injection doesn't have any negative performance on the engine, even if it's not working properly. And to top it off, the emissions difference is minimal at best. Now, this can be a bigger problem if you have to undergo emissions testing, so that'll ultimately decide how important this is to you. So we've got all the XRS specific stuff out of the way. Let's talk about stuff that plagues all of these Corollas. This is gonna be a pretty short section. The big one is rust, particularly in the rearmost corner of the rocker panel. This is a very common place for these Corollas to rust. I see a lot of Corollas start to rust right here. In fact, as you can see, my car is plagued with this issue as well. Then there's fading paint. The clear coat and paints will peel and fade if you don't take care of it, especially Impulse Red which is prone to becoming more orange than red. And the plastic headlights and fog lights cloud up. You can buy a $20 kit to fix this. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I told you it was gonna be a short section. So after all of this consideration, you finally found an XRS. You're gonna go take a look at it. You're gonna go test drive it. The number one thing I can advise you, and this is really for any car, is to bring a scan tool. Bring something that can read the ECU. Now checking for engine codes in either pending or stored 
is what everyone remembers. What a lot of people overlook is checking the IM readiness monitors. If you go in there and you see monitors that are incomplete, it means that it's been reset at some point, probably because it's had a check engine light. If you can, test drive it for at least half an hour. This will give it time to at least throw something into pending and you'll be able to see what code was cleared now if the seller won't let you test drive it for that long and you see that there's im monitors that aren't set knock the price down at that point there's a higher chance than not that the seller's trying to play you don't give in another thing you'll want to keep in mind when you're just looking at the car in general is its history now obviously carfax and service history can tell you so much about a car but keep in mind that this is the Corolla XRS. This is the performance Corolla, which means that more likely than not, it's probably seen some abuse in its lifetime. It's important to think about since cars that are driven hard for most of its life wear down faster than cars that are driven nicely. And that's everything you should keep in mind if you're looking to get a ninth gen Corolla XRS. Don't let the mileage scare you. Always get a Carfax and detailed service records and have fun. If I missed anything, do tell in the comments section down below. I also invite any Matrix XRS owners to share any flaws for the Matrix specifically in the comments below. I also invite any 10th generation Corolla or Matrix XRS owners with the 2.4 liter four cylinder to share their thoughts down below as well. If you found this helpful, a like on the video and a subscription to the channel would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.